Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about templates and how to um, make them and use them with Ponym Clay and how they can um, improve the outcome of your projects. Now this is a, a sort of fairy door, it's an ogre's door really that I made for Brandon and um, when I first made these uh, different kinds of fairy doors I made a template, I kind of designed the angle that I wanted it to be at and then I cut it out using lined paper and I also cut out um, the inside sort of door that goes with it um, here's one example it's very battered and I don't know if you can see there but there are lots of pinholes in it because I not only used it as the shape to cut out the actual door I mean, this is like the shape of the back this is like the shape of the actual door um, I used the lines that I've drawn on it there to make little pinholes and I followed those pinholes with the edge of a ruler I think actually to sort of press down and mark out the planks for my door so um, they're not necessarily the exact ones I use for this but you know what I mean so that's a very simple way to make some templates for your doors uh, or for your whatever kind of object you're going to do but you are a bit limited when it's lined paper like that and you can see that in the beginning I was quite scruffy and didn't use the actual lines after realizing how useful templates are I started to um, use squared paper which was a lot better and um, this project here which is not really finished I had mirror tiles that I wanted to put on it and I wanted them to be um, nice and straight and um, this isn't the one I actually use because it's a lot smaller but it'll give you the idea how did I know where to put these when because even if you put it on like one of those like measuring mat things you, you know you can't see where to put these things so what I did was I used a template that I've made I marked out where I've measured out these squares I marked them out onto the clay so I'll show you what I did with this one as I say, bearing in mind that this is a lot smaller than that, that one. So here's my template and I put it onto the clay. Gosh, it only just fits, doesn't it? And cut it out like this. Following those lines. Obviously I'm kind of rushing because it's a video. and then use my flexible blade to cut along the top and you can push this down onto the clay so it kind of sticks and then because I have these um, drawn on here already what you can do to make sure that your uh, windows look straight is or your, whatever your embellishments you're putting on is you can put holes in the corners and I'm going by the graph paper not by my pencil marks hopefully you can see I'm a little bit low there but never mind do this carefully each corner So now once this is baked and I come to glue my little tiles on, I know that they're going to be straight because they're marked with um, the dots. I'm just going to take that little edge off there. Um, if you want to, you could bake it first and then mark these afterwards. But of course you'd have to use something a little bit tougher and you would probably use something like this and give it a good twist or, or the corner of a knife to mark them on the um, actual finished baked rather backing but then uh, you know provided you don't move it like I did then you can bake it and immediately put on your tiles glue them into place and you know they're going to be straight and then the rest of this embellishment is safe to put on the top and then bake it again so that's uh, one way of using it now this is all very well but you might be saying to yourself well what about if I have um, an object that isn't quite as kind of square and easy to translate uh, as this 
and um, for that I'll just roll this clay through again let's pretend that's perfect for that I have a suggestion and I think you're going to like it okay if you want to use something irregular like this there is another way that you can transfer that shape now I can't see my ruler I don't know what I've done with it but I'm going to use this now, just as a guideline I'm going to draw this whoops this line down the middle of the paper that's just for my reference because sometimes I get a bit lost on where I am I had a blood clot on my right retina that damaged my vision so this is why I always find tricks to keep things nice and straight because I can't see them that well with two eyes so I use this ink pad to ink up the tree now it's a little bit tricky to get this tree straight and I try and choose a place where that you know it crosses the lines cross on the actual paper and it takes a little bit of time to line it up without putting it down but once you do and I mean you might take several attempts and I might as well <laughs> but once you've done it you can give it a good push like that it's a little bit sharp don't worry and look now you have a picture of your tree on the paper and this means that you can um, start to design where you want your baubles to be now you might just put dots in the middle where you want your baubles to be or so you're going to use these cutters to cut your baubles out maybe you'll have a go and put them on and center them up or see where they look good and you can actually print your little baubles onto your tree before cutting them out does that make any sense so it's a good way to plot your work before actually jumping in and starting messing around with clay which takes a lot longer than messing around with paper so that's a good idea for that now just turn this over this for instance look at this cat head <laughs> this is really blunt so it's really good for printing and again it's a very very irregular shape but if I put it on my paper I'm going to use this part here to kind of line up with the lines on the paper and let's see if it makes a good impression oh it did pretty well it's not too bad got an ear missing but let's give that a wipe with a baby wipe you can see here we've got a little impression of the cat's head so even though it's quite an odd shape I've managed to line it up really well on the paper and that will inform me when I come to make its face so I've done one here I've cut it out and um, drawn in where I want the eyes to be and I've just messed around with a few other things tried to make them position them well so now oops if I cut out my cat's head from there and take this off actually now when I cut out my cat's head I know that this is going to be reasonably the same size and shape I can lay it on top like that and then with my tool I can mark the middle where I want the cat's eyes now honestly if I had done this without I just know it would have been the most cockeyed cat so maybe that would have been brilliant and it would have given it a load of character or maybe it would have just been rubbish so now I know where the eyes the centre of the eyes needs to be and I'll show you that there I don't know if you can see that the lighting is very weird it's night time and um I'm not used to doing night lighting I'll get into it again so there's my pussycat and there's his eyes and if I wanted to go further with it I could also mark the corners of the eyes I could mark where I want the nose anything to put the details on the face so there you have it templates are very useful not just for cutting out the outside shape but for positioning things on your work 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it made sense to you. If it did, you know, do like and subscribe. Leave any comments and questions down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I love you all. Bye-bye.